Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to another fireside chat with Product School. I am here with Jacob Nettleblatt of my, um, Mentimeter, sorry, nearly said something else. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, thank you for having me. Okay, so um, yeah, let's dive right in. I'm so curious to learn about the things you guys are up to at Mentimeter and how you got started. So um, how did you find your way into product management? Um... Not super deliberately. I, I started out in engineering school. Um, I studied industrial engineering and management at the Royal Institute of Technology, which in, in Stockholm, Sweden, which gives you really like wide platform to to apply uh, for different jobs. Uh, and I couldn't really decide what to do, so I went with management consulting because that felt like really broad as well. Uh, and after doing that a couple of years, I had like a long list of companies and jobs I was really not interested in, but I had and find kind of like what I really wanted to do. Uh, so I joined King, um, uh, the, the Candy Crush company, uh, working with, with data-driven business development uh, in their business performance department and working a lot with their actual games. And that's where I realized it's super fun enabling people to build products that a lot of people use. And there's a lot of data in those games, of course. So there was a lot of uh, fun things to work with. I was working with one of the new Candy Crush titles at the time. And then eventually I moved to San Francisco with King uh, to work with uh, business performance related to their platform partnerships, the collaborations with Apple and Google, et cetera, uh, which was super fun because San Francisco is an amazing city to be in, but I also, felt a bit disconnected from the actual products from the game. So now I was working in this support function instead, and I was kind of missing out on the actual product action. Uh, and that's where about the time where Mentimeter reached out, uh, hiring for a VP of product because they were going to like take their product big and they needed someone to help them grow. So that's when I went like back deeper into product and uh, haven't regretted it since that was uh, two and a half years ago. Nice. So what kind of things are you guys up to at Mentimeter? Can you tell us a little bit about the product and what kind of things you're offering your customers? Uh, so Mentimeter is an interactive presentation platform. So we basically build a presentation tool, not very dissimilar to Google Slide. It's a presentation tool within your browser, but uh, everyone in the audience who participates connects to the presentation. So if I would be in a room holding a presentation on the big screen, everyone would join the presentation with their phone and they can give their input throughout the presentation. They can give you thumbs up or thumbs down or you can plant questions within your presentation that people can interact with and you kind of gauge the room in real time and the, uh, the audience can also ask you questions as a presenter through a built-in Q&A. So we build a kind of more inclusive and interactive way of, of presenting. And while we're just while we're talking about Mentimeter, I hear that you're uh, versioning your organization. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what's happening there? Yes. Uh, so we're we're, uh, we're constantly iterating and rolling forward with with the organization in the product department. And the product department, I should say, at Mentimeter is both like engineering, design, and product management. We call it the product department. Uh, and we always uh, version the organization. We don't do big reorgs. Uh, we're currently on product organization 1.91 because I think like big reorgs are scary. Uh, people know that there's this huge change coming. You don't really know which team you'll be in, who will be your manager. People are a bit scared and it creates insecurity that someone like um, over your head is taking the decisions that affects your everyday working. So we never do reorgs, but we constantly adjust the organization with small changes, moving someone from a team to an another team, creating a new team out of a previously larger team, and those minor adjustments almost on a monthly basis. And that's why we use version numbers. I think it's a good way to, uh, to remove like the insecurity and uncertainty that the big reorgs uh, can Absolutely. cost. And I guess that means that you're setting the expectation with your teams that things are going to constantly change and it doesn't sort of have that fear factor of, oh God, one big change. <laughs> Definitely. So I, I mentioned I joined two and a half years back. The product team back then were uh, eight people, I think. Uh, now we're, we're moving towards 100 people. So we're growing very, very quickly. So there's definitely going to be change and versioning your organization and always talk about the small adjustments that are coming is a great way to kind of embrace the, the change because we, we say that uh, like the only concept that Mentimeter is change and we need to accept it. 
So with with all of these changes in mind, I guess that means that you're often looking at like the the short term changes, like what's happening now. Um, but in terms of the long term, what do you think the future for Mentimeter is and uh, how will the future hybrid workspace affect that? I think like the hybrid workspace, especially when it comes to our product, I think we have a very like compelling offering for for the um, uh, remote workspace and the hybrid workspace. So as I mentioned, um, like we put people in contact with your presentation. So if your presentation is on the big screen and I'm in the room, I would join it with my phone and I could interact with it, which was kind of built for in the room meetings that happened. And then suddenly about a year ago, everything turned remote and it turns out we're the perfect tool to use in remote settings as well, because like you all have these big Zoom meetings and all hands and someone on stage asks you like, how are you guys doing? How's your week? And you can't have a hundred people unmuting at the same time, but you can create a poll within your presentation and have everyone remotely contribute to the discussion or by thumbs up or thumbs down or, or asking questions. So we, we turn out we work really well for a remote setting as well. And we will definitely be working well in a hybrid setting uh, for sure. Because even if you're like at a big venue uh, with half of the people in the room and half of the people remote, the discussion is most likely going to take place in the digital meeting because that's the only place where the remote participants can participate. And it's a bit clunky for, for people in the room to bring their computers and join the Zoom call, for example. But everyone can join the presentation through their phone. And then suddenly you level the play field between remote and present people in, in the hybrid workspace. So I'm, I'm super excited for the kind of new ways of working because I think our product will fit really well there. Mm -hmm. And for, for you personally, um, how have you found the move to working remotely? Because I know some product people in particular find it difficult from a leadership perspective to be able yeah. to lead your teams, even as, as great as remote tools are, there is just that magic of being in the room. So how have you found it? Um, it's challenging for sure. And as you mentioned, there are a lot of great tools to kind of bridge it. Uh, but to me, I think it's, it's it's hard, it's challenging. And I think it depends a little bit on what kind of leader you are. I try to be like as close to the people in my team as possible and always like make room for small talk and like check on them, how they're doing. And there's so many things caught in between meetings just like happening in the corridors, right? And it's very hard to substitute those small interactions with booked meetings in someone's calendar or Slack messages. So um, it's a, it's a challenge for sure. Uh, and something I, I I need to get better at being like more spontaneous with my Zoom scheduling as well, uh, and not only rely on the like uh, in the room meetings that happen. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I'm dying to dive into questions about product in general because I've got a bunch yeah. of things to ask you. Um, what would you say are some of the biggest myths and misconceptions about building digital products? Um, I think. Some people, at least people who haven't been working with digital products, still has this perpetual startup garage thing in their mind. Uh, people still think that Mentimeter is built by three dudes in a garage with a laptop each and were this uh, soon to be 100 people large product organization. Because like, building really, really great software that looks good and scales and is compatible with all the platforms is a huge undertaking. And I think people sometimes underestimate uh, like the amount of work that goes into it then. because it's digital means it's just super quick you just write another line of code and you have a new feature right that's not really how it works if you if you've been on the inside yeah you almost want to you want to give these people who say that say that it's easy and that it's like five people in a garage you want to give them a peek behind the scenes as they yeah. know, all of these people doing all of these things yeah, and there's like um, enterprise versions of your product and there's compliance that, that, that needs to be taken into account and like legacy and tech debt. It's, it, it's complex, for sure. It's super fun and super challenging, but you still need a lot of people if you're going to do it like large scale and have hundreds of millions of users. Mm -hmm. And what would you say are some of the most important skills that product managers need to succeed in this like new product world that's being built? Um, I think you, you like if you wanna if you wanna move into product management. I, I think you you really need to have like the good people skills. Which to me, I'm like this pretty extroverted social person. It's easy to make those interaction happen in real life, as we talked about. But 
I think if, if you want to be a, a good product manager now in the remote world, I think you need kind of a, a set of tools and ways of working to be that kind of people person, even though you don't meet with your people as much. At least to me, that's a new challenge since Mentimeter was not a distributed company before the pandemic. Uh, but that that's something that I think is really important because it's all about people at the end, right, who, who builds the product and designs the features. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a leader, what new skills have you had to develop or gain as you moved into a position of authority? Um, like, always see the people behind the change. Like, like drawing this perfect organization on a whiteboard is really, really easy. But actually have it happen and have everyone being content with the change, that's super hard. That's, uh, that's so much more work than just like initially sketching it out. Uh, so that's why I think we work with the, like the um, versioning of the organization. Because sometimes I have this bigger vision of a larger organization, but that's not going to be my big reorg. It's maybe going to be 10 incremental steps towards that larger vision because that really brings people along the way. And I think like a, a great skill to have is to be proactive with with decisions and um, like let people know that things will change and ask for their input and let them know that you're thinking about maybe doing this change in the future and bring people on board with your thoughts because then eventually when the decision comes or the change happens people already have heard about it and they're kind of familiar with the thoughts uh, Maybe it takes some decisions slightly longer time to take, but overall, I think the transition is much smoother that you do the kind of change management gradually up until you make the change rather than making the change and then manage uh, people's expectations afterwards. It sounds like as, as a leader and as a company, you really value your, uh, your teammate's sense of security. Um, it's and it's one it's one thing that a lot of companies say that they really value feedback from everyone and that everyone's opinion yeah. is welcome. But it's another thing to make sure that people fe really feel that they really feel like their opinions are welcome. Is that something that you actively have to work on at Mentimeter, or does everyone already know that their opinions are valued? You, you definitely need to work on it, uh, and I don't think there is a place where everyone automatically just assumes that your opinions are valued just because that happens to be one of the five core values on your career side. I think it's something you have to work with every day because after all, we all want to have as high psychological safety as possible because that's we know that theory tells us that that's where the greatest innovation and the greatest product happen. Uh, and I think to us, it's maybe easier to talk about because a lot of about what our product is about is also making people feel included and make them feel heard because uh, you can always contribute with your voice uh, in a meeting through Mentimeter. Uh, and if you have like a, um, a question and everyone gets to vote on something, everyone has an equal voice through their phone uh, in the poll, uh, which is also a great way of leveling the play field because it's not the loudest voice in the room that is typically heard, but everyone's opinion counts equally much. And you don't have the phenomenon where the, where the um, maybe most dominant person in the room expresses their opinion first and then everyone kind of quietly agrees. Maybe someone had much better opinion and that's a way, great way to harness that uh, anonymously through Mentimeter, for example. It's so great that one of the, the core values of your organization is one of the like core features of your product, which is collaboration. So that's a really nice thing right there. Exactly. So we, we, we often say that our organization and our product and our values, it's the same thing. Uh, that, that we believe in this so strongly as a way of running companies that we actually build a product that helps other companies do the same. So, yeah, I, I really believe in it, for sure. Mm -hmm. The best tool to build is the one that you need every time. Yeah, and which makes it easier for other people to be those kind of inclusive and listening, engaging leaders, especially now in remote times. Mm -hmm. Definitely something that the world needs more of. Yeah. Um, <laughs> One of the uh, one of the big topics of conversation that we're seeing um, in terms of like professional development and like well personal growth in terms of professional development is doing things that don't necessarily scale not as a business but as a as an individual. Is there anything yeah. you intentionally keep yourself doing even if it doesn't scale? Um, yeah. A lot, I think. Um, so, like being in hyper growth, it means that 
a lot of things will change. Uh, and like, I think we've sometimes been a little bit slow with more senior hiring. We, we tend to hire someone more junior people that we really, really strongly believe in. And then we like uh, nurture them and see them grow. Uh, but one should not underestimate like the importance of actual experience, uh, at least in the areas of hypergrowth and how to set up autonomous teams that scale, etc. I think, uh, if I could change something that would maybe be bringing in more experienced people more early on, because I notice myself doing a lot of the things that, that don't scale now that we're like exponentially uh, larger than when we started out. Mm -hmm. And obvi obviously Mentimeter is in your uh, in your tech stack of the things that you use on a day to day basis. Without yeah. saying. Um, what other tools are you finding particularly helpful at the moment? Um, I, Miro, of course, uh, I love everything they're doing, uh, especially a huge fan of their successful like viral business model, um, which I think in a lot of companies in remote work has noticed they, they fall into like the, the Miro conversion trap, which I think is brilliant. Uh, so I, I really like what they're doing. Uh, we've been in contact about doing something together, maybe. So let's see what happens there. There's nothing tangible yet. Uh, Figma, of course. Uh, I love how quick the designers can make uh, clickable prototypes in Figma that we can try out. Uh, I still make my own clickable prototypes in PowerPoint still because that's how I was trained as a, as a management consultant, but uh, Figma really helps. And Trello. I think Trello has a really great uh, power-up model where you can add features along the way. Uh, so we currently use Trello with all the power-ups they are. Uh, and that keeps us from moving to my, uh, to uh, Jira, for example. So I think Trello really works with the kind of we want to be a platform and have an app store model. I think they've achieved it in a way that works for us. Uh, for example, I don't think a lot of people use plugins to Google Slides, for example, but there's an app store for that. But the Trello one is really successful, I think. Mm -hmm. And what advice would you give your younger self as you were progressing in your career? Um, just like study if you want to move into product management like study companies you think have done an exciting journey like uh, maybe uh, backtrack Trello for example at what point in their growth story did they add a power up concept and how did that evolve over time and what has that meant for them uh, and, and try to understand why you like what companies do and also the opposite try to study like products you maybe liked before, but then somehow degraded. And what decisions did they take along the road that they kind of failed or weren't the right ones? Because it's very easy to say like, I'm, I'm a fan of Apple products, they're awesome, but everyone likes Apple products. Like yeah. try to find something else and try something you don't like. And if you can explain why you don't like it, I think that's very valuable input to have. So like the, the product strategy side to me is always uh, interesting to hear people talk about. And as long as I'm, I'm convinced, as long as you, you uh, have a, like a, a nose for, for product strategy and you're a general people person, I think you can be an excellent product manager. Mm -hmm. And what advice would you give to um, people who maybe worry that they don't have the right background? Like we, we mentioned experience um, yeah. where there are not, not, Oh, an overwhelming amount, but there are a lot of companies who only want people with experience, and it's that yeah. an egg problem. How do you get experience if you don't, if you can't get yeah. the job? Um, what advice would you give to people who are have almost got like a clean slate? They've never done anything with that similar yeah. product before. How would you suggest that they get started? I think you can always like gather experience in some way. It doesn't have to be strictly professional experience that you have worked as a product manager before. I think you can still like acquire a lot of interesting product management skills and insights on your free time. Uh, as we talked about previously, like study companies you like and study companies you don't like and try to figure out why. Because if you're applying, for example, to, to a role which you don't have experience for, if you add maybe in your resume or if you reach out to LinkedIn to, uh, to someone, um, in a hiring position at those teams, add some add some text to it. Like you give your own thoughts. How would you take? Like how would you 
developed that product if you were a product manager or have you observed like yeah, observed a um, an opportunity uh, in the direction of that product could be growing or something like that you can always try to impress people with hypothetical insights right and those insights can be based on either actual experience or just you being a product interested person regardless of what actual work experience you have absolutely so um i've got just one more question for you and mm -hmm. before we ask it i just want to say thank you so much for joining us it's been yeah, an sure. absolute, absolute pleasure having you here um so my final question is there's a lot of different components to working in product. You've got obviously your your meeting with your teams. Your uh, when you're in a leadership position, you're you're working on uh, growing your uh, your teammates, and then you've also got to do some of your own individual work. But what's your favorite bit about being a product manager? What's what's the part of your day where you really think, yes, this is what I love doing? Collaboratively wireframing on a whiteboard being in like solution exploration mode and try to come up with cool ideas and then shoot them down and then sketch on something new when you see something like there's potential here, there's something cool coming out of this. And to me, I still have had to find a tool uh, remote that can facil facilitate that kind of joint creativity that can happen in a room with a whiteboard. Uh, Myra is great in a lot of ways, but there's something magical about like actually being there with, with the pen in your hand and being a bunch of people taking turns sketching solutions. That's I, I love that. And some of the some of the best Mentimeter solutions have come out of those joint meetings where you just get to be super creative. I wonder if maybe we'll end up in like uh, in a few years time, we'll all end up in like VR rooms and there's like a VR whiteboard in front of us and we're all writing on this VR whiteboard together. That would be sick. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe VR for everyone uh, with full duplex sound where you can be like as loud or quiet as you work or want to and like everyone speaking over each other just as happen as it happens like in the physical room. Maybe then with nail the remote creativity yeah maybe mm -hmm. i haven't thought about vr before but maybe that's the solution for it because mm -hmm. i feel there's something i really miss now that everything's uh, remote mm -hmm. i think the um things like christmas parties over vr that would be that would be hysterical i'd be really yeah. up for that <laughs> Uh, well, uh, that's all the time that we have, unfortunately. Again, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. And uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, I hope you got some really cool insights from that. Uh, keep an eye on Mentimeter. I think they've got some really cool things coming up in the future. Bye. Bye.